it or not, academic achievement is seen as a proxy of many different competencies, which are intelligence, ability to process and reason. But more importantly, the amount and level of focus and dedication, which is an important factor for somebody to be successful. Adults, pretending as if this reality does not exist, is simply driving the younger generation to easier and unrealistic career choices, which is harmful from, uh, for, from a long-term perspective. Even this narrative is, is harsh in some time, or may limit some dreams, we're happy to make this trade-off, because in a realistic sense, many people have to live on as office workers, and in that sense, higher academic achievement is simply more important. First, I'm going to contextualize what, the, what is the paradigm that the opposition side supports, and then going to rebut and then move on to the substantive matter, which is what, why this narrative uniquely encourages children to study and pursue it a better career, and secondly, how this, pol how this narrative would rectify the information as this asymmetry between different social classes. Now moving on to the context. Number one, I'm going to first depict how this narr narrative is being portrayed. In reality, there is a general correlation between your academic results and background in success, which are income, as they have mentioned, which is directly connected to economic stability. What they have been dismissive on this point is that in South Korea, unless you go to a good university and get a stable job, you would not even be able to date a girl and get married because of the unstable income sources. And secondly, by academic, achieving a better academic achievement, you will be able to take on more impactful works in society, like given an important mission or given a bit like a more important occupation, which also connects to the psychological well-being of these people, which they have really they haven't been they haven't been they have been quite dismissive on. So we will make this clear to all children. Secondly, what is the relation with other narratives, other existing narratives? So obviously, even under our paradigm, there will be narratives like, number one, overwork is evil, or work-life balance is important, which would stop people from committing overworking or overstudy. And secondly, we also recognize that some exceptional career choices do exist, like becoming a musician, artist, or actors or actresses. But at the same time, we'll make it clear that this would be a very difficult choice to become because it is a very, very rare occupation. So the balance between study and performance is that, in reality, most people have to become office workers at some point or the different professional, and that's why this narrative should be treated as a paramount narrative within society. With this being said, I'm going to first give you two responses to the previous speaker. Number one, he talked about stigma. So we don't really think this is a unique reason, explicit reason to affirm this motion. Because even without this narrative, the community finds one way or another to put ranking on people and discriminate, like looks or number of friends. We don't really think this narrative alone is responsible for the ranking problem. Secondly, they talked about delinquency problem. We don't think this is true, because this usually happens in a much moderate way. If you go to a, uh, in a suburban uh, city, there would be like mild Yankee people who, um, who come together based on value of family. But rather, we think this of narrative is important because this helps low performance to organize against the snobbish elite as like a, a, a bond, by having a family bond, by creating an axis. So we don't really think that their analysis stands to begin with. With this being said, I'm going to move on to my first substantive matter, why this narrative uniquely encourages children to study. So obviously, as I have signposted, the first target and the primary target of this narrative are children. As we all know, children don't think study as an important task to take on. Because and they will like simply give in to the desire to use most of their time to like TV games or playing baseballs or reading magazine instead of um, bo sitting in boring math or history classes. This happens because of the following two reasons. Number one, there is a severe information asymmetry between children who are in mandatory education, for example, with what's happening in reality, which is adults being ranked based on uh, like the name of the university or the academic achievement. And secondly, simply immaturity defeats the long-term perspective, even if they kind of sense this possibility from their, parent, from their parents' conversation. They don't really know that this is a serious problem that they have to act right away. So without knowing or understanding the seriousness of not studying, this creates a situation for children where they come out of school with insufficient ability or knowledge, or they didn't even try to go to a better university. The harm is the following twofold. Number one is that when they make the choice not to study, and they come out of university, it's too late to climb up the social ladder. In reality, important jobs like lawyers, astronauts, or consultancies, 
they look at your academic score and which university you've been, or like the extracurricular activities that you have done, and then they will treat you, uh, they will use it as a proxy to see how intelligent you are, or how much dedication, or how much sense of problem you have, to have towards the society that based on what you have done in school. So if you like make the choice not to study without knowing that importance and just come out like from uh, di didn't even try, it is too late because even if you understand at that point, you can only understand that in a retrospect and you cannot go back to go back time. That's why it's extremely important. Uh, yes. If children have a strong dream of being lawyers or astronauts, the parents' educational system can say that you should study because that is your dream. Well, yeah, yeah. Course okay, yeah. The, the not problem is time. children usually don't recognize that as an important choice. That's why they go play outside. So, um, secondly, um, that's why we think that having this narrative is extremely valuable because we can use this as a fear tactic. Because if you don't study, this narrative will function in the following way. You will feel a sense of loss by not doing this important thing. And you, it will give, give you the sense that you may lose your future by not opting into studying or not achieving a further academic performance. That's important because time only flows uh, to, to the future. And we have to act right away as, ch as children. Secondly, how this would solve information asymmetry. So the second target of this debate is adults. And especially light or uneducated ones who are living far away from the city. Because of the fact that these adults are not educated or not haven't been into higher education themselves, they don't really understand the importance. What, what this belongs to the society is that this fixes different social structures because parents reproduce similar social class children. If we have this widespread narrative saying that academic achievement is important, even parents do not explicitly tell their children that it is an important thing, children may think that not studying may be a bad choice. This will enable children from that social class to commit to opt into education. For those two reasons, ladies and gentlemen, because in reality, academic achievement is very important, and we cannot dismiss this as a narrative, the motion should